In this screencast, we're going to discuss plural effusions. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to identify the common features of plural effusions on radiographs and CT. A pleural effusion is the filling of the potential space between the visceral and the parietal pleura, typically with fluid, although pus or blood can have a very similar appearance on both radiographs and CT. Some common etiologies for pleural effusions are volume overload, infection resulting in a reactive pleural effusion, malignancy that is spread to the pleura and is now causing an exudative effusion, and then hemorrhage, which we most often see in the setting of trauma or recent surgery. When you think about the findings of a pleural effusion, you're going to want to look for blunting of the costophrenic angles on your radiographs. Sometimes if the person is in a supine position, you won't see that blunting quite as well, but you may see a gradient of density from the lung base to the apex. And that's because the lung base, even in a person who's supine, is still dependent compared to the lung apex. So more fluid accumulates at the base, less fluid accumulates at the apex, so you have this wedge-shaped gradient of density. You can also see a thickened pleural line, and that's looking along the lateral chest wall and seeing a separation between the ribs and the lung tissue. In large pleural effusions that are only affecting one side of the chest, you can also see mediastinal shift. Now let's look at a few cases. We have a frontal and a lateral chest radiograph. In this patient, we can see some of the classic signs of pleural effusion. This is an upright radiograph, and in this case, we can see a meniscus formed by the fluid resting in the lower part of this person's right hemithorax. That fluid is causing a little bit of thickening or separation between the ribs and the lung tissue, and it's also causing some underlying atelectasis, which is not easy or separable on a radiograph from the pleural effusion. Together, they both have the appearance of soft tissue. If you look in the left hemithorax, we have likely a very small left pleural effusion. So you get a little blunting of the costophrenic angle but it's not nearly as apparent as on the right. On a lateral radiograph, we see this blunted hemidiaphragm and a meniscal sign, and we even see a little blunting or rounding of this diaphragm or costophrenic angle. And let's compare that to a So a normal patient should have sharp angular margins at the costophrenic angle. So on both sides, we see a nice, sharp costophrenic angle, where in the patient with the effusions, we have these rounded or blunted costophrenic angles. This is a very useful sign in a patient who's upright, and I, and, and I want to emphasize the importance of getting upright radiographs if you can on your patients, because your patients have an easier time getting the right level of inspiration and we also are going to be much more sensitive to pleural effusions. Again, those pleural effusions may be more evident on the lateral. Here we see nice deep costophrenic angles for both of the hemidiaphragms and a nice clean look to the lung bases. In this patient, we can actually see on the lateral some of the pleural effusion extending up into the fissure of the lung, and we can also see blunting of both costophrenic angles due to the presence of fluid in the pleural space. When you have a very large pleural effusion, you may get mediastinal shift. And one of the important things when evaluating someone who has a complete opacification of one of their lungs is whether it's due to collapse of their lung possibly from a central obstruction, 
or is it due to fluid or blood that is filling the hemithorax? In this case, we know that this is due to a pleural effusion because we see the heart pushed into the left chest. So there's some space occupying process going on in that right hemithorax and it's a large pleural effusion that is causing collapse of the right lung but is also pushing the mediastinum into the left. If you did not see that mediastinal shift to the left or if the mediastinum was shift, shifted to the right then you might be concerned that the lung was collapsed but that a pleural effusion wasn't present and that could happen with some central obstruction whether somebody swallowed something that's obstructing their airway they have a large mucus plug or they have a central obstructing mass. Appearance of airspace opacity that is really due to a large pleural effusion. I often see this type of appearance to the lungs mistaken as pulmonary edema. In summary, a pleural effusion is a space occupying process where fluid, pus, or blood fill the potential space between the visceral and parietal pleura and cause compression of the adjacent lung. It's best detected with upright two-view chest radiographs and on those chest radiographs you're looking for blunting of those costophrenic angles which in a normal person should be very sharp and angular.